Good morning. We're going to be here at this house in uh, Tampa. We're taking a look at this house to see what kind of conditions are here uh, or not here in regards to safety. We're going to be doing the electrical panel today. As you can see, it's right over here on the, my left. It's on the exterior of the house. Um, so as we go through this, I'll be basically stating some of the things and issues you should be looking for. And we're going to start basically with spatial requirements. All electrical panels are required to have a 30 inch wide uh, versus as well as a 36 inch deep working space in front of it. And that's not from the wall it's mounted on, but from the face of the panel. So if we were to measure from this point here that you're seeing here over to the house, we have roughly 32 inches, which um, and, and I'm doing this because there's a lot of things here that indicate that this was most likely not a permitted installation. With that said, so that's number one, our spatial requirement. Um, and, and so, you know, we have a, a panel that requires to be flipped up. So that limits how you're gonna work on the panel. You actually have to sit down or, you know, kneel down on the steps to be able to get uh, access. So we're gonna go ahead at this point, we're gonna look up the riser. We're looking at the attachment points as we go up for an overhead service here. Um, the attachments are, are in pretty decent shape. The two that you see up there that are taped off are the hot wires coming in from the street, which is this overhead line that, goes, that you see it attached to. And they're okay, they could be retaped. an electrician can come in, he's gonna have some other things to do here as well. Can just kind of clean them up and re-insulate them. That way it stays safe so if they get touched during a storm, they don't short out and, and cause a failure. Uh, as far as the meter can is concerned, it's, it's proper size, properly sized. This service, when you look down into the main breaker here, it's a 150 amp breaker. And I look at that to compare it to the meter size, the meter can size. Because a lot of times when something's not been permitted, they take an old meter and you'll know it because it's going to be a lot shorter. And they'll, they'll, uh, that meter would not be rated for the size that you have. So you want to watch out for that. That would be another indicator. Um, it does have an older surge protector right here on the side. I'll switch with you and you can see that's what this is all about. Um, the fact that this is older is most likely it's not functional anymore. Uh, with the years past and, and we, the storms we've had, once these surge protectors take a hit, they're pretty much done. So respectively, they should be changed out. And that would be come down as a recommendation. And then they could actually put a surge protector in the panel directly um, and, and have a much better protection for the house for lightning. So now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna get into pulling off the, what I call the skirt or some people call it the inner cover of this panel. And you can see, I'm gonna actually have to sit down in here to do this, which is not a good thing because this doesn't give you evacuation point if something were to happen here, you're kind of stuck. So the, the, the placement of this panel, the height isn't really necessarily the issue. It's the fact that we have no, no place to fall back to. So when you come in, you, you want to be careful because there could be stray currents in the cover of a panel. Um, I've been basically doing this, uh, doing inspections for around 25 years, and I've been in the electrical industry for 45 years. So I have a tendency to go a little bit quick, but I can f tell and, and feel, uh, which is very important, your touch and feel on things is very important so that you can get a, a good gauge as to what you're working with. Now we remove this panel cover and the one thing we want to note on the panel cover is the, is the labeling. The labeling is there, but it doesn't really show that it's complete, okay? Um, this system has two air conditioning units and it has two air handlers. And we're only seeing indications of one and one. So we have to need to be aware of that as we look through this panel to see how things are functioning and what, what's happening in regards to um, the makeup of the panel. So as you can see, it's a square D panel. It's actually a, a decent panel physically. Uh, there's some small internal things that are going on here that we wanna make note of. Number one, if you look right over, I'll use my pencil. If you look right over here, these two conductors are what's called cloth wire. 
you notice the difference because it's a it's a fiber wrapped on the conductor itself this is not cloth because it's got the uh, neoprene cover and there's different types of of wire here some neoprene some rubber uh, so there's a, a different gauge of, of conductors these ones down at the bottom are like a rubber covered conductor and so um, what's happening here is just it just kind of tells you the age of the uh, that these things were uh, updated over the years the cloth wiring most likely goes into a lot of the branch circuits for outlets and lighting and that kind of thing that will not pass an insurance report so you want to definitely make sure you note this because as it goes in um, it will be frayed out in a, in a box it could short out easily uh, it's just not it's past its prime it's it's not a usable conductor anymore um, as we look into this and we look into deeper I've put my flashlight in here and I follow these conductors down just to see the condition overall condition and as I do if you look right in where that light is that conductor is actually bare now it is a neutral however uh, that being bare there could potentially be a load shock there or an overheating factor something of that nature so you want to make sure that you check the conductors all the way down when you see this old stuff and you come in and while it's down here they didn't put a bushing or any kind of protection around where these conductors are coming into the panel that's very important especially when you're dealing with this kind of this kind of stuff because the, the conductors will wear on there uh, and you can almost see that there's some already starting to wear uh, and as it wears through it's just going to short out and and potential for a fire hazard as we come through here, one of the things I, I like to do is I'm going to touch the back of these breakers, just running up lightly with my hand to see what the temperatures are. And as I go up, some of them are warm normally. Normal operating pro procedure on something that's not really um, pulling a, a large load is going to be around 83 to 90 degrees, somewhere around there. These I'm getting somewhere around 90. 89 as I move up uh, this one's starting to climb I'm getting 95 I'm getting 97 99 on this guy which is these um, uh, conductors there but as I get to this top breaker I'm getting 132 it's capped out at 132 degrees I don't know if you can see that that scale how it's jumping up to 126 130 127 that's not a good thing um, we we went out and we're um, gonna find out why this is doing this this is one of the things you need to do you need to follow up on some of the conditions and what they're marked now now when we look at this breaker right here it's hot I mean it's it's burning hot if you leave your hand on there for a long time when you look over at the panel labeling it's called ACCU so that's telling you it's an AC system condensing units so when I put an amp meter on it um, I carry that around in, in, in an older situation like this I want to see why it's heating up well I'm only getting a load of approximately 16 amps if you see that this is a 30 amp breaker at a load of 16 amps it shouldn't be getting this hot so that tells me from this vantage point that the air conditioners that they're be using there all the motors might be old and it's, it's developing a lot of uh, heat you also have hermetically sealed compressors out there that are working really hard generating heat we want to find out why it's doing this and and we're going to take that further down the line one of the other things in this panel is up at the top left you're going to see two conductors up there that are tapped together these two neutrals are tapped together they should not be because a neutral within an electrical circuit can become a current carrying conductor and even though this ground bar is meant to disperse the balance coming back to the panel having two of these together could result in current going back to the opposite circuit and thereby somebody getting shocked and getting hurt so that should be corrected uh, again the uh, uh, not, all of this is non-metallic wire it's all copper it's all decent we have this one feed here which is a uh, looks like it's aluminum but it's not 
This is another type of conductor that you need to watch out for. This would be called, uh, uh, there's a lot of different terms for it. I, I termed it over the years copper clad wire, which looks like aluminum on the outside, but if you were to scrape it, you'd see copper underneath that coating. And, and so they're also very hard to bend, very uh, whatnot. And so this one, uh, we're believing, feeds the air handlers up in the attic which if you look over here, it says AHU. And um, uh, when we're going around, we're gonna be looking for most likely some kind of sub panel up there, okay? Um, with that overall physical condition of the panel is not bad. Our biggest issue, like we said before, placement, it should have been routed out that way some to be able to, um, you know, to be able to have better working space out in this area so that if something were to happen, if somebody got caught here, the only place they have to go is here and I'm still within arm's length. That's what they're trying to eliminate. So this would be flagged for, for uh, the different small items that we found. We definitely got to find out what's wrong with this heat. That's where we're going to go next. Um, and we're going to go find out about that. So um, that's pretty much it, what we see here. And we're going to take the next step and go out to those condensers and see what they're doing out there. Okay, here we are out here at the condensers. These are the units that produce the, ref the cooling for inside the home. And they're currently both running. They are, we had set them so that they will run for quite a while so that we can test the cooling on the inside of the house as well as see how it's operating uh, mechanically and electrically. That sub panel we're gonna open up and see what's going on inside it because the wire that we found hot in the other panel comes to here. Now remember, you have blower fans. That, those are motors that generate a lot of heat electrically. Inside you also have hermetically sealed compressors, which also develop a lot of heat electrically. And this is what one of the things I think we're feeling back there at the main panel. So as I go in here, again, I'm going to lift this skirt cover off and we're gonna see what's going on. Now that we've got the cover off this panel, we can see that they've fed this panel with a number 10 wire here, and then another number 10 here off of this feed here, and that's what goes on that breaker that's back at the other panel getting so hot. Now, we have two condensers tied to that. And that number 10 wire, even though the amperage didn't seem to be large, we have to go based on what these units tell us. For example, when I look on this unit right here, there's a nameplate down at the bottom in the back. And I know you can't see it, but it says that this unit is going to draw a maximum of approximately 12 amps. When we were on the other side, we were getting 15 amp draw, which when these are paralleled like they are, it'll balance that load and drop it a little bit going back, but it's not enough. This number 10 wire is not large enough to dissipate the heat that's being generated by these two pieces of equipment. So that is gonna to need to be changed. When we, when we try to check here, we're gonna take the amp meter and put it around it this unit here on the left, it's only drawing eight amps, which is normal operating amperage for this unit. The one on the other side is only drawing seven amps. Hence, what we had back there was about 15, 16 amps load, but we have a large motor load generating a lot more heat. So this wire should most likely be updated to at least a number eight to a number six wire feeding these condensers. When you look at the condensers, they have what's called a maximum circuit breaker protection. And that's to allow for the startup, uh, which is one of the things that develops the heat back there. Um, and this one has a maximum circuit breaker of 20 amps. When we follow this back into this panel. This circuit breaker is rated at 40. This is too, sm too large and needs to be changed out because it does not allow protection for this unit. The other one 
over here at a maximum amperage of 25. And when we follow up in here, it is correct. 25 amps right there. So even though the debris in here needs to be got out, what we're more concerned about is that heat being generated in that other panel on that breaker, uh, because that's a really large potential fire hazard. That breaker could break down, start arcing on the bus bar behind it, and therefore blow and, and potentially just weaken it, weaken it, weaken it over time. So here we found our reason for that, and now we know how to move forward in telling our client how this needs to be corrected. There you go.